So if you haven't watched my previous video on delegates, then look at the top right corner and there'll be a little eye uh, up there. Uh, this is essentially what a delegate is. Uh, is it allows you to put, um, you, you know, you have integers and strings and you can declare variables of that type. Uh, what a delegate allows you to do is uh, create variables of a type of function. And that type of function is based on the function signature. And the function signature is the, the values returned and the number and types of parameters. So we have void, so it's not returning anything, and it takes in one string um, and does something with it. So let's say you're writing a program that can either work on Windows or it can work in the command line. So you're going to have some kind of condition here. So I'm going to create a condition here called bool is Windows or is win. And I'm going to set that to true just for debug purposes in here. And then I'm going to say if Windows is true, I'm going to create um, a, a type that I'm going to create an instance of this this uh, variable here, this delegate. Uh, so I'm going to say show message. So show message uh, equals no. And I'll show you how we can like bring this all kind of like tidy it up as we go along here as well. So show message equals null, and then I can say if is win show message equals, and then I'm going to cheat. I'm going to call this uh, Windows uh, show message, which I is a function I haven't created yet. Otherwise show message equals console.writeLine because console.writeLine actually provides uh, one of the overloads is it doesn't return anything and it takes in a string value. So I can actually use that as my delegate because it matches that function signature. So uh, I can then have uh, a function down here called um, Windows show message, string message, and then I can then do message box show message. Okay, and I need to make that static as well uh, because I have just created just this blank uh, pro program here, project here. So I'll close all these so you can see the full program. So this is the this is the program in its entirety. So just to go over this again, this is the, the delegate here, and uh, I'm creating this temporary variable here for true, uh, setting it to true. I'm creating a, um, an instance of this delegate here called show message. I'm then declaring whether, you know, if it's Windows, then I'm going to call this function. Otherwise, it's going to be this function here. So uh, my last bit here is show message. Hello, world. Uh, and so when I run this, I should get a dialog box that pops up and it says hello world, which is exactly what I was expecting it to do. Uh, and it, likewise, if I set this to be false, uh, I'll need to set a breakpoint uh, in here. Uh, likewise, when I set this to be false, so now it's going to run this function and you see that it flicked up there. If I go back to the console window here, you see it says hello world. Okay, so this is good, but let's let's clean things up a little bit. So the first thing that goes is this is all a bit redundant. Um, so uh, we don't need to define this as, as a Boolean value. You can actually use var uh, and the compiler just works out, oh, this is a Boolean value. Uh, the other thing as well is this is a bit messy. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as a ternary operator. Now a ternary operator is um, you would have um, your variable and then you have uh, a var equals and then you've got your condition. And if that condition is true, this is the true value. And if that condition is false, you get the false value. And that's a ternary operator. And all of that is this line here, these lines here. So that one line, we're going we're gonna to turn into this one line here. So our uh, 
variable here is actually show message. So there's our show message, so we can get rid of that. Our condition is our is win. So we can put that in there. And if is win is true, so this is our is win is true, we want to say show message equals Windows message. So we paste that in there. Otherwise, it's the console. So now all of that goes down to uh, very, very little. So, uh, no, 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 no. and it's not let me do that for whatever reason. I think I might need to cast that as show message. Uh, and that, then it goes away because it, it gets confused because this is, there's actually many of these. Uh, and so it, it doesn't know which one to, to choose. So as soon as you cast it to show message, it goes, oh yeah, I know the right one. That's, it's fine. I got you. Um, so again, I'm running this and is win is uh, false. So that means that I'm going to get my console output. I'm going to set this to be true. I'm going to get control back. I'm going to set this to be true. I'll then get my little dialog box that pops up there. And and that's delegates. So delegates are great, but what if um, what if I don't want to have a delegate? I don't want to explicitly create this. I don't want this. I, I have to define this somewhere. So sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I, I just want to do this inside my function. I'm not interested in publishing this to the outside world. I'm not interested in publishing it anywhere else other than inside my my function that I have here. So let, let's rewrite this, but we're gonna use the action delegate. So the action delegate is just a delegate. So if I do uh, action, uh, action like that, and then I press F12, uh, you'll see that it goes, goes to here and it says encapsulates the method which has no parameters and does not return a value. And you'll see that it is a delegate. It's public delegate void action. So you're basically defining a delegate with nothing in it. Now, actions can also um, take parameters as well. And the way you specify the parameter is you use your angle brackets because it's generic, and then you specify the, the value. So I'm gonna say this is a string. So now if I press F12 on here, it will now take me to um, this definition of uh, action, and it says a public delegate void, and then it takes an input of some type, so in this case it's a string, and you see that it has the formal parameter is a string of whatever value it is. So how does all this uh, fit in here? Well, I can actually just delete this now, and um, it's now confused because it'll say that it can, there's no explicit conversion between method group and method group. So I can actually just take this value here and do the exact same thing that I did before. And everything works. Now, now, now I don't have my delegate. I don't need my delegate because my show message you'll see is now an action string. So it's a delegate that takes in a string parameter and returns nothing back. And so now my program is much, much shorter and I don't need to worry about cluttering up uh, all these other things out there and everything works exactly as, as it should before. Um, and you'll see that we, we get that there. And uh, if I set this to be uh, false, oops, that was too fast. Uh, if I set that to be false, then you'll see that we get hello world up here. Uh, and that's that's delegates. The delegates are just a nice way of being able to um, use um, use function, uh, sorry, uh, create delegates, actions, sorry, actions are a good way to create delegates on the fly. So rather than having to formally define a delegate, you don't need to do that. You can use actions. And the great thing is that you can actually pass in actions um, to uh, other functions uh, and 
get them to perform a particular task. So for example, uh, let's say you wanted to do something called output. So you could do static void um, output, and then you would take in the message. Uh, and then just for fun, I'm just doing this uh, action string, and then you would pass in the action to perform. And then what you can do is you can do action dot, and you can do invoke, and then specify message. You can do it that way. Or what you can do is you can just delete the word invoke and then just pass it in as if you would do a normal function call. And you see that it takes in an action. And if I delete the first one there, you see that it takes in a string object. So now instead of doing show message, what I can do is I can do output uh, hello world, comma, and then show message. Uh, and this does exactly the same thing as before. So if I set this to be true, I'll set it to be true because it's easier to show with this uh, dialog box that pops up. You see that it does that there, which is great. But here is the best bit. You don't even need to do this, okay? What you can do is you can actually pass in an anonymous method inside this function here. And what we do is we use Lambda expressions. And the way we do that is we just do um, our action here. So our action uh, takes in uh, nothing. Um, actually, it takes in a string, sorry. Our action takes in a string. And what we want to do with that string is we want to perform some kind of operation on there. So let's just output it to the window. Uh, Console.writeLine s. So now we have an anonymous function. And we can actually make it even shorter because we uh, can actually just delete these parameters here. And then we end up with our Lambda function here. So if I just delete these for just now, because we don't need them, uh, we can now output uh, our, we can now output here and then we pass in the actual action we want to, to complete. Oops, control key plays up. Uh, and so, uh, Again, everything <laughs> works the way that we expect it to, and we get our console output. Uh, and this is the, the sort of uh, the, the great power of, of these actions is that if you want to just create something on the fly, uh, then you can do that there. And if you want to create more than one line, so let's say you want to do it, um, uh, you want to do this 10 times. So you can do for int i equals zero, i less than 10, i plus plus, um, do that. There you go. So there's a there's a more complex um, uh, function that you can you can write. Actually, that that would work in one line. Let's say you want to and then do console dot line tequila at the very end of it. So there you go. There's multiple lines inside there. So uh, when we run this, we're gonna get Hello world, 10 times, and then tequila at the end of it. And that's actions. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is part of the Video A Day in September 2017 videos. Uh, if you liked it or you didn't like it, hit the appropriate button below. Uh, subscribe, so if you hit the, the little icon over there, then you'll get notified, uh, especially when you hit the little alarm icon. That's the really important part, apparently. Uh, then you'll get notified when a new video goes up. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.